I lived with five or six crackheads. I couldn't focus on homework as a kid because I'd wake up in the night getting bitten by roaches. These words from Derek Rose show us just how truly awful his childhood living situation was. We were living in poverty. You always have that thought in your mind that today might be your day. I remember stories of finding crack pipes, taking it to my grandma, like asking her, what's this? When I was younger, I had a gambling problem. That was the safest way I could bring money home. Growing up in Englewood, Chicago, a neighborhood with over 4,000 shootings from 2001 to 2016 alone, Derek Rose could have been a statistic himself, but instead, he rose up to become the face of Chicago during the early 2012s. The youngest MVP MVP in NBA history, a true inspiration to anyone going through a struggle. Unfortunately, it was at his life's peak when, in a cruel twist of fate, everything was taken away from him. So today, we are going to look at one of the NBA's most unlikely stories while also deep diving into one of the most tragic injuries the world of sports has ever seen. Derrick Rose's story as a Chicago Bull can be told through three highs met with three extreme lows, giving us a man who, as you will see, is the NBA's biggest biggest what if. At his highest peak in the league, Rose looked like a future top 10 player of all time, but before we get there, we had Murder Park, the nickname of Derrick Rose's childhood basketball court. Real name Murray Park, there was no humor in this nickname. Chicago Magazine reported from January to August of 2008, the year Rose was drafted, that 28 people were murdered in the surrounding area of Murray Park alone. Crime and poverty was all around a young Rose. It was all he knew. His brothers and mom kept kept him away from the crime, but as for the poverty, Derek's family could not afford anything extra. They lived month to month with everyone chipping in what they could. I couldn't get money to even get like, like five cent candy. I used to get a cup and put powdered sugar in it and get a spoon and sit there and watch Power Rangers and eat powdered sugar. But growing up in these surroundings, when his God-given basketball talent began to show, Rose knew he was meant for more. As the youngest child, he was going to get his family out of a living nightmare. Despite Murray Park's extreme violence, a young Rose could be found at the park at all hours of the day. Him and his friends would shovel ice off the court in the winter just to get in game there was even a time Derek broke his arm and was found playing that same night with a cast on his hand. I still play with the cast on, bro. I was still playing. Somebody that broke their arm at one o'clock and you playing basketball at seven o'clock. Derek was only left alone from drug dealers and gangs because he was marked as someone who could make it out and make their neighborhood proud. The fact that his father was not in his life only made his desire to become great that much greater. And his college coach, John Calipari, would remember. He comes on campus in the summer and I go in the gym and he's sweating. He had been in there about an hour. I take a recruit somewhere, come back to campus. He's still in the gym. He'd been in there five hours. I call him over, kid, what are you doing? What do you mean? Market coach, I work. Working hard was all Derrick Rose knew. Many who are gifted coast by, but not Rose. Because of this, in high school, Derrick gave us a moment that truly is what Chicago legends are made of. As even though he was a legitimate superstar as a high school freshman, Rose chose to go to Simeon High School where he played JV due to head coach Bob Hambrick's rule that no freshman, no matter who he was, was allowed to play varsity. At Simeon, Rose wore 25 to honor former Simeon player Benji Wilson, who was the number one prospect in the nation before he was tragically shot and killed at the age of 17. A horror story of what could have happened to Rose if a single day of his life was different growing up in the environment he lived in. To some, wearing Benji Wilson's number would add pressure. To Rose, this was life. He was the chosen one who was going to put his city on the map and he knew he would play at a level that honored a Chicago legend's memory. As a freshman, Rose led the JV to a city championship and was so dominant that his coach was actually willing to break his rule and let Rose play on the varsity for the state tournament, but Derek declined. He didn't want to take away playing time from someone who had earned it all season. So the next year as a sophomore, he would go on to become an All-American. And then as a junior, he became a top five prospect in the nation. And in the state championship, game tied. Here is where the legend of Derek Rose was truly born. Here's Rose. He's going to make a play. He's going one-on-one. -on -one. The lock, the score! Derek Rose with the bucket, 
Cubs, they have won the 2006 state championship. What is also legendary is we have a new channel, Coors Light, where we are doing detailed what ifs, such as our recent latest video, what if Luka Doncic was in Michael Jordan's draft class? The link to that video is in the description. It would mean a lot if you went and checked out that video and subscribed and turned on post notifications for Coors Light. If you enjoy the content there, only if you enjoy the content. By the way, a new what if is coming on this channel very, very soon. Stay tuned for that. And now getting back into it, a game winning shot to win the state title is what anyone shooting in their backyard dreams of. Derrick Rose didn't have a backyard, so his dreams went far greater. As a senior, he won the state championship by over 20. These two state titles were Simeon's first since Benji had led the school to a title in 1984. The city of Chicago was officially on Derrick Rose's back and he was making them proud. In college, he was an All-American freshman and was the best player on a Memphis team that reached the NCAA finals and unfortunately, he is remembered for this moment. Backed off as well. Wow. Stayed with that one. Collins driving, almost lost the handle. Chalmers for the tie. Rose would miss a key free throw that led to Mario Chalmers tying the game and Kansas winning in overtime. Horrible, but what's forgotten is the run that made Derrick Rose the number one pick he became. As Rose would score a season high 27 points in the Sweet 16 to lift Memphis over Michigan State. And then in the final four, he would put up the third most points he scored in the season, 25, in a blowout win over UCLA. Which meant by the end of this year, everything had clicked. Leading us to the three highest of highs Derrick Rose felt as a Chicago and then the three tragic lows that took Derek down. As if it was God's plan to have Derek in Chicago, the Bulls had just a 1.7% chance to win the 2008 NBA draft lottery as the 2007 Bulls were actually a major disappointment. They were picked to finish with 50 wins, but instead won just 33, which meant somehow everything lined up and with a 1.7% chance, Chicago won the draft lottery, took their hometown guy with the number one pick, and Rose officially arrived in Chicago seen as the the city's savior. The man who could get the Bulls out of the post-Jordan era, but also, he was a man who had some help on his roster. Which leads us to our first high, the 2009 NBA playoffs. As in 2009, Rose was named the NBA's Rookie of the Year. However, we all know that when the lights are the brightest, that is when the most important games are played. That is when the best of the best come out, and Derrick Rose showed us exactly how advanced of a young player he was against the defending champion Boston Celtics. As in the first round, the Bulls were just the seventh seed, but with Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett sitting, Derek saw his chance to capture the world's attention, and he did. In game one, Rose would score 11 points in the fourth quarter while also giving Chicago the lead with two late free throws before this went to overtime, where Tyrus Thomas caught fire and Chicago took the upset win over the old champs. This was a historic night, as at this point in time, Rose was seen as a potential star. However, this was his true coming out part. The 36 points Rose finished with were at the time, the most scored by a rookie in his playoff debut since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who had accomplished that feat in 1970. Kareem would go on to win six MVPs, so Derrick Rose was in great company, and Rose also finished game one with 11 assists. The league was officially on notice. Chicago vs. Boston in 2009 also gave us one of the best first-round series we have ever seen. Game two came down to this. Rose is on Rondo. Allen. Over Noah. Oh! Game four saw Ray Allen again come up huge. Allen for three. Let's go. He ties the game with 9.8 remaining. Before the Bulls won in two overtimes. Chicago could have taken game five if the following did not happen. It's Pierce. Is this the dagger? Which meant Chicago could have won this series as they did win game six by one in triple overtime. No one after the win. Galloping with Pierce. <laughs> Game 7, though, was a 10-point Boston win, but as you can see, Chicago, with a rookie Derrick Rose, had plenty of chances to take this one, and they were seen at this point as a young team on the rise. Here's what Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett remember from that series. Derrick Rose versus Rondo, though. Rookie Rose. Ooh, he was proud. 
But I remember that that series was D Rose actually thought, man, I can beat these guys by myself. I don't know which game it was, but he rocked it, he cradled it. It was like, whoa, point guards is doing that now. Huge words. And in year two, Derek was named to the all-star team, making him the first bull since Michael Jordan in 1998 to make an all-star team. And by year three, he was ready to break the mold. The difference between Derek and everyone was again his work ethic. Listen to what Kobe had to say about Derek at this time. Young guys do not earn your praise easily, but there was clearly a respect on the court while you were going after him and he was going after you from that first game. I can tell when a player you know, truly wants to be better. You know, that being said, I mean, I've seen improvement in this game from last year to this year. It shows me that he's putting the time into the gym. And so before the 2011 season began, Rose would famously ask reporters this. Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why, why, why can't I do that? The question, why can't I be MVP, is iconic. And the season that followed was, of course, Derrick Rose's second high, his 2011 MVP winning year. Playing at Murray Park, seeing real life horrors play out in front of him as he was playing basketball gave Derrick a different presence on the court. He was calm under any pressure he faced when the stakes were just who would win a basketball game. We saw this when Derrick Rose was named an all-star starter and while everyone else danced, Derrick stood there. At guard, making his third appearance as an all-star for the Chicago Bulls, Derrick Rose. Again, the second high though, of course, was becoming the youngest MVP in NBA history. Something people have tried to discredit in the years since, saying LeBron should have won the award. But if we look at LeBron versus Derrick directly in terms of points, rebounds, assists, and field goal percentage, a slight nod to LeBron, sure. We do have to remember that the Chicago Bulls were the one seed over the Miami Heat at this point. And now let's compare rosters. Here's LeBron's stats next to Dwayne Wade's in 2011. They were nearly identical. Meanwhile, on a team that had the number one defensive rating in the NBA, the Chicago Bulls. Let's compare Derek, who finished first in the Bulls in points and assists, to Luol Deng, who finished second in both. There is no comparison. Derek Rose was the Bulls' entire offense on the best defense in the league, and Chicago finished with a better record. Derek won the MVP this season for great reason. He also did not stop there. In the 2011 playoffs, first went down the Pacers, then went down the Hawks, as in Game 3 versus Atlanta, Derek scored 44, another statement, which led us to the Eastern Conference conference finals and in the regular season Chicago had won every game versus Miami then in game one they also won taking a series lead that had everyone doubting the Heat's big three and had everyone believing Chicago was going to win the title that wouldn't happen Chicago lost the next four games but with a young Derrick Rose complimenting a soon-to-be first team all NBA slash defensive player of the year in Joe Kim Noah Chicago seemingly had the roster of the future it was only a matter of time before they won a title only. Before we have our third high in Chicago, we have our three lows. The three injuries that took Derrick Rose down. As in 2012, after another all-star starter year, in game one of the 2012 playoffs, the Bulls were the one seed and again were determined to take Miami down and win the title. Only up 12 with about a minute and a half remaining of game one of the playoffs versus the 76ers. Derrick Rose drove to the basket and then... Look, we're, we're looking to sweep you guys. You wanted us. You were crying out that you bypass the, the harder team in Miami. Uh oh, uh oh, Rose came down bad on his left foot. See him holding onto his knee, holding onto his knee and down. Low number one, a torn ACL. The torn ACL that took away the youngest MVP in NBA history. We know that Derrick Rose never recovered from this point. However, there is still a third high. Before we get to that though, low number two came after Rose sat the entire 2013 season, worked relentlessly to come back, then 10 games into the 2014 season, went down with a torn meniscus. Even worse, low three came just one season later, as in the 2015 season, same story. Torn meniscus in February, only this time, Derek returned in April to play. If there is one thing we can never question, it is the toughness and drive and work ethic Derek Rose displayed at all times. At this point, Derek Rose had accomplished his personal goals. After being named the youngest MVP ever, Adidas had signed Rose to a contract that was worth near $200 million, and the NBA actually invented a new salary cap rule for players such as 
Derek, known today as the Derek Rose Rule, players in their first four years who have been voted to start in at least two All-Star games, or have been named to the All-NBA at least two times, or have won the MVP, are allowed max contracts worth 30% of their team's salary cap compared to 25. Derek was given the salary that was named after him, so financially he was set. We've seen players such as Ben Simmons before, ones who can never get back to the court. Derek drove himself to get back to basketball, to get back to Chicago, to win a championship for his city, which makes his third high so memorable and so tragic at the same time. Because while we now know that Rose would never be the same, that he would never make another all-star team after his injury, at this time during the 2015 season, fans still had hope. Derek was just 26 years old and the Bulls won 50 games in 2015. On top of this, that season, new hope had emerged. As Jimmy Butler went from the last pick of the first round in 2011 to a 20-point per game scoring all-star and most improved player in 2015. If Derek could only regain his MVP form, or at least come close to it, the Chicago Bulls were legitimate title threats, and against LeBron James, it did look like they had a chance. In round one, Chicago had taken down Milwaukee, which meant round two gave them Cleveland, and in game one, Derek was back to himself. D. Rose would finish with 25 points, five assists, and five rebounds in a seven-point Bulls win that stole home court advantage. Game two saw Cleveland win, but in game three, we had high number three. Rose trying to get open, fires away! Bang! It's over! The Bulls win at the buzzer! Yes, after another great game, Derrick Rose connected on a game winner. The Bulls were up 2-1 to one on the Cavs. A finals appearance was very much in play. Derrick's face said it all. But unfortunately, our story turns again. As Rose wasn't the same. His athleticism had been zapped and Chicago would lose the next three games as Rose shot under 40%. In game four, it did look like they had a real shot at this. Derrick even had 31 points, but LeBron would sink them with a game winner. James for the win! It's gone! LeBron James at the buzzer! So it is here where I will present a bonus fourth high and a bonus fourth low. As in 2016, Rose did not suffer any major injuries to his knee. He did have an injury to his eye, but the magic was gone. Derek averaged just 16.4 points and 4.7 assists per game on 42.7% shooting in 66 games played. Which meant after the Bulls failed to make the playoffs, they no longer believed in Derek and management decided to trade him to the New York Knicks. And the clip of Derek finding out is just a sad one. You see it? That might be traded to New York. It's funny how <sighs> everything plays out. I don't know how I feel right now. Like, I'm anxious, but that shit made me who I am, man. Just can't believe it. Again, in his career, Derek would never reach another All Star team. He would never become the same superstar level player. However, we still do have high number four. Because with Derek Rose, we had a man who had gone through everything. Who, as a child, had worked non stop to get his entire family out of an incredibly dangerous situation. This was a man who had been at the top of the NBA and showed how hard he was willing to work to get back to that level only for his body to fail him. A story a lot will call sad, but we did have one game of redemption. As after the Bulls, Derrick Rose has played on the Knicks, Timberwolves, Pistons, and Grizzlies, proving the grit he has, but it was on the Timberwolves where his God-given talents were shown once again. MVP Rose was back for one game. Playing the Utah Jazz, Derrick Rose had a career-high 50 points in an emotional display that saw him score clutch baskets and even finish things off with a game-winning block. Another rebound. Exum has it blocked in the corner by who else? Derek, 2011 MVP, Rose. Jeff Teague would later say, So before the game, D. Rose was like, man, you playing tonight? D. Rose was like, don't worry about it. I'm going for it. I'm getting 50 tonight. So when he get up to like 40, he all start getting emotional. And I'm like, why are we getting sad? So we get in the locker room and they playing a speech over the thing. He like, Man, I, I've been through hell. I'm like, damn. So while injuries took away what Derrick Rose could have been, it's better to focus on what he did become despite his circumstances. He is an inspiration to anyone in a struggle. If you work hard, if you fight for a better life, you can make one. And if you are pushed down, you can always work to come back. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you don't miss a video like this. If you're still here, I really think you'll like this video in the left corner about Anthony Edwards. That is a deep dive into the Michael Jordan comparisons, or I think you'll like the video on the right, which is YouTube's personalized recommendation for you. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.